Hello everyone. I'm Doc Eon, and I am here to bring you a review of a book which is all about, as the title says, Painting Wargaming Figures. It is by a painter named Javier Gomez, El Mercenario. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. It is published on a small press called Pen and Sword. And it, well, you can see the price, the cover price here on the back. Uh, I think I got mine cheaper from Amazon. It is, well, there's some white pages at the end here, but 218 pages of text and pictures. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of pictures. This is good for a painting manual. And there are also these charts, charts, uh, tables. I will explain what those are in a little while. But first, let's go through the contents. Uh, it starts out as in, uh, pr with a preface and introduction of, about his um, background as a painter, how he got started in the hobby and stayed in it. Well, it's not just a hobby. He's a professional painter. He, he He's a professional commission painter for many years. Uh, part one is the basics. He where he talks about things like paints, uh, primer, varnish, brushes, glues, how to hold the figure while painting, a palette, tools, painting space, a few basic concepts. Now, these basics are. I I I feel like I'm going to repeat myself. I've said this about most books and videos about painting is that any any time a painter goes through these basics they never cover it all they just they everybody has their own perspective on it there's very few things that everybody can agree on which means you can never get the full picture and the full full range of available techniques from just one source. You're going to have to read a bunch of books, watch a lot of videos to get a more breadth in your understanding. Um, what I can say about having having myself read a ton of books and watched uh, hours and hours of videos, I will say this guy, Javier's technique, uh, or, or rather his, his idea about materials are a little bit old school because he's been doing this for a long time and he he has um, stuck with some solutions for example for varnishing that he had to figure out on his own before current products were available and he has stuck with those solutions it's perhaps not the most practical solutions for somebody starting out today so you know use your judgment um, now next is how to paint miniatures which is the basic technique uh, he talks about undercoat which means primer he talks about base colors highlighting and various techniques such as uh, black lining dry brushing uh, washes which is not for highlighting but shading and so forth um, and it's it's a it's a rather short chapter um, if I'm gonna uh, explain what this technique basically is it's the three color technique uh, if you've seen my videos about uh, Kevin Dalmore's painting guides for the foundry it's that same technique it's not explained as in as much detail here as it is in Dalmore's books. So for, for, for just technique, those books are superior. This book has another advantage, however, and I will get to that in a moment. Now, um, what's the next thing? Using patina. Patinas is a term I've not heard used actually before uh, in painting parlance 
what he means is staining uh, essentially um, a sort of general uh, wash of the type people used to do with with the wood stain and these days you can use those cans from army painter the, the dips and he actually mentioned mentions this he, he says the army painter sells tins of ready-made patina right so it, they don't call it patina but it's what he calls patina and he explains how to use this and he also gives you a recipe for mixing your own bitumen of Judea the really old-school way using uh, a solvent-based matte varnish, some turpentine, and uh, some other stuff. And I guess if you really want to uh, kick it old school, you can do that. And so, you know, that would be an interesting way of doing it. Part two is about how to paint different colors. And he has sections on black, white, red, Let's see, black, um, white, blue, there's reds, uh, brown has a, gets a section, and uh, uh, grays. I'm going to come back to these pages, by the way, in a minute. I just want to give you an overview. Here we have greens, metallics. Um, part three is themes, which means how to paint certain kinds of areas. And of course, flesh or skin is one of those. Um, faces is another theme, uh, how to go about um, what areas of a face to paint. Horses. Because this, I should have mentioned, you might have noticed from the pictures, this is not, generally speaking, a book that exemplifies fantasy and sci-fi miniatures. It's a historical uh, war games uh, focused book, because that's his focus as a painter. Uh, but you get a lot of different recipes for how to paint horses. And shields? Shields, funnily enough, considering that the three-color method is uh, a method that gives kind of um, drastic results, very, very, very uh, high contrast results. It's interesting that he paints shields with a freehand technique that is very much uh, detailed. It, I mean, if you look at this, these ranks of Romans. I mean, the shields are almost given more care than the main figures themselves, which is kind of interesting. He has a very interesting chapter about, chapter about flags, some advanced, really advanced freehand work on these flags, uh, some step-by-step -step procedure, how to make your own flags out of tin paper is his suggestion, uh, and the various steps to go about making historical flags. And he, he has a section about camouflage. You've seen most of these were Napoleonic or approximately that era figures, but he has some more modern military figures here and different ideas about how to paint camouflage that I found very interesting, uh, potentially more, more effective than what I've tried to do previously. So that was good. There's a section about basing different techniques for uh, putting texture on bases, which again is interesting and has some perspectives that were new to me. Um, varnishing, he says varnishing is my personal nightmare and yeah, I, um, I'll, I'll pass quickly over that. The final two sections of the book about different scales. Uh, he, he, throughout, he's mostly been exemplifying with 28 millimeter models, but he talks here about larger scales, and specifically, he gives an example of a 40 millimeter model here, and he also talks about smaller scales, 
like 15, 10, and even small, smaller scales. It gives an example of a 15 or 18 millimeter figure. And the, these highly contrasted uh, techniques with few highlights that he uh, explains are, of course, even better suited to smaller scale stuff. So, um, coming back to an overview of what's in this book. Um, you, you probably know if you've followed my own painting that I like to have more highlights or, or more subtle highlights than the three color method produces. But if you know anything about that method, you also know that if you have the color progression for the three, as, as for example, he gives the base color, the first highlight and the second highlight, and he gives the mix ratios, you can simply add more steps in between by by not by mixing slower so to speak uh, by mixing less of the first highlight into the base color and then just doing more steps along the way uh, he doesn't come out and tell you that but but it's easy enough to figure out on your own and the really useful thing about this book is that he gives precise recipes for different shades of the various colors, like several different reds, which is difficult to come up with in, in different red combinations. And he gives you, uh, and, and different types of brown and blue and so forth. And he gives you the exact mixes if you are using Vallejo paints. Now, the thing is, those Dal Kevin Dalmore books I mentioned, they also give that sort of uh, instruction. However, those books used foundry paints, of course, because they're published by the War Games Foundry. And uh, how to put this diplomatically, I don't know anybody who uses foundry paints, to be honest. I, well, nobody I know personally in, in the community here in Itabori, and nobody I've seen videos by on YouTube uses foundry paints, really. It's Citadel, it's Vallejo, Army Painter, Reaper sometimes, or P3 sometimes, but no, no I've never seen foundry. And... Vallejo, I would say, is probably the second most common paint brand used by by painters. So having these guides with the precise paint names and numbers from the Vallejo range is actually really, really useful. So I would say my final recommendation is you don't need to be just painting wargaming figures. I mean, the color combinations, they can be used for any sort of figure. Doesn't matter uh, the genre or time period. S and so I would say, if you use Vallejo paints, this book is a good buy. If you, if you want help figuring out mix ratios and, 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 uh, combinations of paints to use to get specific colors if you if you do that all on your own you have a perfect sense of color and you can mix anything by eye sure you don't need this uh, I'm not that good and I'm going to get a lot of use out of this um, once I finish using my current Vallejo game colors and I progress to only using the model colors <laughs> that is because it's all model color, um, mostly. Uh, so, yeah. Once again, uh, there is no such thing as the perfect miniature painting book. Um, they all have their pluses and their minuses. They all have something to teach you if you're interested in learning. This one has some specific things to teach that I've mentioned. 
And if you're if you feel that the things I've mentioned make sense to you, then you should really pick this up. That's it for this video. I hope you got some useful information from it. I will see you in my next video. Until then, I'm Dakian, and I'm signing off.